Welcome to The O Show. I'm Laura Babcock. Recently, there was a huge public meeting. I'm talking line around the block, couldn't even fit in kind of public meeting that happened in Hamilton, in Ancaster to be specific. And it was about the changes to the green belt. Now, what's fascinating is that environmental groups were messaging to me that the meeting was some kind of a sham. There were city councillors outside taking selfies together, looking like they were happy. But it became so much worse than what I expected when I started to see the tweets and then the blog that was put out by Margaret Skimba on that meeting. Margaret, it's so great to have you here on the O Show to talk about this. But after I speak with you, I'm going to speak with one of those counselors who took that picture of looking happy at the meeting and responded to me very thoughtfully, Alex Wilson, about where council's at and how he feels about this whole green belt. Like, what were your expectations going to this thing? I did participate in the green belt survey that the city put out. I thought it was going to be around next steps. If there was anything, it would be, what are, what are we going to do next? And I looked at the screen and I saw that we were dealing with the former Greenbelt lands and that it had to do with community benefits. Then I realized that's when it ticked that this has to do with the survey and what the city is doing in terms of trying to bring people along uh, mm -hmm. on the idea that the Greenbelt is going to be developed. Uh, we don't have much choice in it. So we might as well get in there and, and get what we want uh, in terms of community benefits. Sounds like it's a meeting to discuss terms of surrender. That's how it looks to me. The intent wasn't there for people to express their disagreement or dissatisfaction with the, with the process or anything about the Greenbelt giveaway. It had to do with um, just moving forward on the deal because the province has already made the decision and it's very pragmatic. You know, so they're selling the fact that we have to do this thing and let's make the best of it. Is that, am I getting that correct? That's basically it, that we have to do it. And people were resisting the idea because we don't even know if this is a legal process. That was one of the first questions that came up. That was um, two extended applause. Margaret, I retweeted that and I'm not surprised. People from all over were like, what? How can a city send a letter to the premier saying as a council, we are not supporting this expansion into the green belt out of our urban boundary, we're not for it. Uh, and even some councillors talking about resistance. And then they throw a meeting with city staff with a PowerPoint telling all the citizens, these are former lands from a communications lens, you've already moved over to the other side. Right? You've already told people it's a fait accompli. Even though you might try to shine around it after that, you screwed up. I mean, that's how I saw it. What are we doing? And did council even know, which I'm going to ask the councillor, that it was going to be positioned that way? But that's what alarmed me, Margaret, was the positioning. Is that what your biggest uh, takeaway was in the blog that you wrote, which was like scathing? It was absolutely that there was this, and I write about it again in my column for Tuesday, so I don't want to take the thunder away from that, but there's a capitulation by the staff to the process that the province has forced upon us that I get is their role to do. And it was alluded to, I think, by Sandy Shaw in the meeting that um, it's a difficult thing for staff to be doing this because they know the people don't want it. They know what the people don't want. Um, they know what them themselves personally don't want, but yet the government is forcing them um, to, to, into this very difficult situation. You know, why are they, is the council having us go forward with a process that they themselves don't believe in, whether it's the facilitator or taking these lands? And, and I'll ask that to the councillor, but from your perspective, you had in your article, the title of it is Forced Community Input No Better Than a Lie. So can you just expand on that in the final moments that we have here? So if I'm answering a survey and I don't have any selections that speak to what I want or what my needs are or what my beliefs are. And I'm forced into participating into it by picking something that could be the least possible thing that's attractive to me. That's a lie to me. That's a lie in gathering information. That's not honest in, that's not honest engagement with people who are, are taking the time out of their lives. Because let's be clear, it's difficult and hard to get people to engage with government. We've got an issue here that has sparked 
that has sparked a fire. If people are going to engage, give them an honest tool to engage in. There was nothing in the in the online survey. There was nothing for me to answer. There wasn't even an opportunity in the comment section to say no development on green lands because I had first to enter a selection that I didn't already agree with. And if I want to not, if I want to have my voice heard, then I have to go through a separate process, follow another, uh, an email route that is removed from this one. So we're all, if, if we don't agree, if we don't agree with no, if we agree with no development on the green belt, and we're forced to participate in a process that none of us agree with, then we're all lying about it. To me, that's negative optioning. It's not giving you the options that you want. It's forcing you into decision making that you you don't want to be doing. And I think our municipalities should do way better than that when it comes to the people of Hamilton. And I think it sends a terrible message to the Ford government that we are, to use your word, capitulating. We're capitulating. Uh, so thank you so much for your work. I can't wait to read your column in the Hamilton Spectator on this. Welcome back to the O Show, Alex Wilson. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a minute and I think one of the things that can happen is when we hear from all of the people who are engaged, and I think that's one of the points I was really trying to make and we'll probably talk about it here, is it's not just what happens legally, it's not just what our politicians are doing, it's not just what the developers are doing, it's not just what the environmentalists are doing, it's not just what the farmers are doing, but it's when we all come together and do our own part in our, in our lanes, but also working together inside and outside of those systems. That's that's when the real change has happened before, and that's when it happens again. But if we only hear from one of those perspectives, one of those things, we're only, we only have one toolkit or we only have one toolbox. And so I think part of why I'm really excited that we're talking about this is we get to talk about it outside of the context of a media cycle, for example. Like that's some, where you're chasing a headline or you're chasing an auditor general report or you're chasing an event. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can become easy to forget that the Ford government did a lot, did these things, and we get into the sense of amnesia. And so hands off the green belt. Like these are rallies that have been happening since October 25th, the like, you know, the well beforehand, but that's this current term. So happy to get into that conversation today. But I think always well, great when we can have everyone, everyone having those conversations, because I think in this fight, we all have something to do. My reaction was from a communications lens, what the hell is the city doing? Sending a letter to the premier saying that they are going to oppose these green belt lands being developed a city who supported not expanding the urban boundary, uh, councillors who have been going to protests and been speaking out loud, uh, you know, and now we have a, like a big public meeting that they're kind of selling the, what to do on the former Greenbelt lands, here are the community benefits. I could not reconcile that in my mind. <laughs> so when you came out and said, well, Laura, legally they are former lands, but here's where we're at and here's where I'm at personally. I thought, okay, well, let's, let's get into that, Alex, because there was a picture that really put me off and it was uh, a picture of yourself and Councillor Maureen Wilson and Councillor Narinder um, uh, Nan, like grinning, like this was a, like a good thing. And I'm thinking, uh, how can they be opposed to this so vocally uh, and so committed to preserving the urban boundary and be smiling at what environmentalists were telling me was a sham meeting and what Margaret Skimba just told us felt like a, a sales job and a lie. Well, so again, I think the thing here is that so much of the stops for all movement has come from our community. And so I'm never not going to be smiling when I see the stops for all showing up and people in Hamilton showing up in resistance. Like that's always, that's always a good news day. Doesn't matter if maybe we're showing up in anger, like we're showing up and we're showing up to demand a better future. So that's I no qualms about that. But to your broader point, we're in a conversation. And what happens when we don't slow down enough to make sure everyone's a part of that conversation or when we're not doing these different types of things to get people really on the same page or at least understanding where we're coming from is I think we can we can lose some of those nuances. And so absolutely, I, I agree with folks who think that this is a a sham consultation or a, pro a process where, you know, manufactured consent is how I talked about this in the public record. And I think that's my main point is we don't have to go through the conversation. You can watch how Hamilton City Council, I think almost every single councillor individually weighed in before they voted on their personal stance on engaging with the province. Um, close to 16 of us gave a position statement. Um, I personally 
didn't want to negotiate in this process because I think it's the challenge that you're describing. It's a legal process that is already happening if we're in the Planning Act, and this is the point I really want to get to later, is like, I think we need to understand what planning is in Ontario. This is how the government is saying these lands will be developed and how they're marching forward with doing it. And it's the city's job, according to the province, and I don't I don't want to do that job, but it's the city's job to come up with a plan to do this. And we can either have a say in doing that, or we can wipe our hands clean and say, you know what, province, we're not going to do the dirty work. You do it. If you, if you want to develop this so bad, you, fine then, do it. And I would just much rather have Doug Ford's signature. I want Doug Ford's signature on this. I want the new housing minister's signature on that MZO. I, I will not be kind of participating in that process. But others have. And others said, no, I think we can get important wins. And that's a tactical conversation, one that we had publicly as a, as a council that folks can weigh in on. And one that I think now folks in community are going, wow, this is a this is a trap, but it's, I don't think it's a trap that Hamilton City Council is trying to trap residents in. We're all in the same trap together. The right. question is, how do we engage from that position? So, there so isn't a real choice on the table. Like no, that's, I think the real reality. So let's stipulate that. The province mm -hmm. is the big boss. They got, they have the purse strings. They're saying you're doing this, right? And now they're taking huge hits and their popularity for it. They mm -hmm. might have to reverse course, in which case you'll get the marching orders as a city reverse course, whatever's gonna happen. But you're saying to me that you know every councillor spoke up against the green belt grab uh, but some councillors wanted to go ahead with this engagement i remember looking at a clip of john paul danko saying that you know oh by the way uh, my colleagues the mayor wanted me to let you know that she really thinks it's important to go ahead with the community facilitator piece of this not the meeting the community facilitator but he said it's an it, we all know it's an illegitimate process and that's that's the cognitive dissonance that i was having trouble with around the discussion about meeting with the facilitator how can you sit there as a councillor in the case of jp and maybe I'll talk to him on the show about it and say, we know this is illegitimate, but the mayor thinks we ought to go ahead and talk to the province. So there's that. And then there's the meeting you guys had about doing this engagement. So let me ask you, even if you did it in protest, because you said to me, you know, on Twitter, I don't think you should negotiate with bullies. So you didn't want to go ahead with this, this, this meeting. Um, but did you know as a counselor? what the meeting would be called, what that initial slide would be. Did you guys have any awareness of how the city was positioning this? No, we have we have governance and we have operations as separate things. But I think the point is that this is being addressed through a planning process. And because that's legally, that is how it's being presented to us. And you're asking us and you're saying, no, this is a communications issue. Address this as a big campaign. Address this as an advocate. And I'm not disagreeing with you, but we have to we can't we can't ignore the fact that we also have to engage with this in its planning context. So let me ask, so let me ask on a timing yeah. thing then. So you didn't know what was on that slide, which is important to me because, you know, if you knew that the first slide coming up, the one that kind of went everywhere was former Greenbelt Lands Community Benefits, I would I would question why council would say do it exactly like that. But let's take the communications lens off of this for a moment. Strategically with timing, did you have to do it so soon when the, the, the accountability on this scandal is just just building with the province? I mean, it's felt to me premature from a strategic timing point of view. Well, because this decision was made before the Auditor General's report or the Integrity Commissioner's report came out because it was unrelated to those things. And so if if there's a call, like, again, I think this is really the, the piece here is not, I think, trying to explain or maybe justify a process. This is the only place that residents have engagement. If we want to talk about bad engagement, like, let's talk about our environmental rights in this process. What we have is a right to provide notice be notified, provide a comment. Mm -hmm. Our words don't have to be listened to. Like that's that's the environmental rights we have. And I think that's also part of this that we we can't be shocked every time there's corruption. We can't be dismayed and uh, overwhelmed because it's happening in education, it's happening in healthcare, it's happening on the environment, and it's been happening right before our eyes, month after month, year after year, across different governments. But yes, this Ford government, we can see a clear track record. The first things they did in 2018 are directly in line with what's happening now. And so that's also, I think, part of when you're talking about strategy and how we deal with this, I think I, my offering to everyone is we have to stop pretending mm -hmm. that there's any goodwill on the other side. I, it's quite clear. I would really encourage folks to read the Integrity Commissioner's report that talks specifically about how developers approach the housing minister in almost four to four cases with the Greenbelt land removals. We want to talk that came out in between these conversations. We have those details we didn't have before about how these lands have been removed. And it's shady stuff in there. I don't think that the housing minister being removed is simply enough to talk about that conversation. And so this is it. This is where we're at. But I think the anger people are feeling, the frustration people are feeling 
for sure, it's easy. And I'm not saying engagement's been done perfectly. And for sure, having that constructive conversation about how to keep doing it better, absolutely. <laughs> but let's not miss the target that we have a provincial government who is actively doing this to benefit conservative party donors is taking land, stealing land, and it's going to speculator profits, not housing. And how can we not understand that in the context of land theft that's always been going on in Ontario? That's why our municipalities can't stop this. We don't have a tool in the toolbox to say we're going to stop land theft because land theft is legal. Like this is the systems are set up in a way to develop land, to say local rural communities, indigenous communities, First Nations communities, your rights are ephemeral to the side. They, they're they inconvenient. We can get rid of them when we need to. And that's that's par for the course. And so that's what this Ford government is coming into and worsening. Mm -hmm. But even if they weren't here, we would still be in a planning system that doesn't give local communities enough of a say, that doesn't prioritize climate considerations. Well, I likened uh, Margaret in our conversation um, the to negative optioning. I mean, she was part of a survey that said, how are all the different ways that you want to do this, not do you want to do this? So she felt as though she was being forced into this false survey, which she can she said is tantamount to a lie. The public engagement wasn't just flawed, it was a lie. It was perpetuating a lie by saying you matter, but you 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 kind of on the big question don't. Now I understand what you're saying is that legally the city has to go forward with this. Um, and that the timing, it's good to know, Alex, and I, I'm glad I had a counselor on about this, that the timing for this session was actually predating the AG report. That matters, right? And even without the AG report, you voted against this session. Um, so you've had a principled stand on this even before we found out all it's, the truth. Yeah, definitely before the IC. There's a chance like the AG report came out same week. I just don't want to, sure. I'm speaking from memory there. So I'll just put a slight little asterisk that I'm going from memory, but I believe it, they were both before. Um, so, but it was a principled position you took. Don't negotiate with bullies. This is not the way to get what we want or to stop this green belt graph, right? Is to go ahead with this flawed process. Um, but now we're here where we are. And there is another meeting scheduled for September 14th. So is there a learning or an awareness about the optics that this is sending to go up there in the middle of this scandal and this protest to this scandal and the protest of the grab and the city's position on it, the letter the mayor sent the premier, and then say to the community, here you go, guys, former lands, you know, what kind of pretty pearls do you want to get out of this process, as opposed to saying to the community, this is where we're stuck. This is how we feel. This is what we've said. Um, how do you really feel about it and getting sort of legitimate engagement numbers back as opposed to just forcing people into a series of options that don't reflect their actual opinion? Yeah, I just I want to be clear, though, I think we are achieving. The cho we are not the one creating this in the sense that, yes, it's the city of Hamilton logo or engagement to create the survey, but the choice we're passing on the choice the province is giving us. And we're saying, hey, public, this is the choice that we are being given. What would you do? And what we're hearing is quite a few folks are saying, don't in don't engage. I mean, we've we've been there. We've had that conversation at council. I think like my position has been clear. I'm not trying to relegate something that's been been done, but I would suggest if folks want to look at that meeting, hear what the rationale of their local councillor was, um, if they agree, if they want to engage, sure, there's time to always engage with your elected representatives on their, their stances on issues. But I think what we're having a conversation about is a how conversation. And I just want to acknowledge how lucky we are to be starting this from a place of universal agreement amongst Hamilton City Council. Like it's rare that we're universal in something. Uh, the development on the green belt is both unnecessary and is going to cost Hamiltonians. It's your, it's you paying the bill, um, whether it's down the line in the infrastructure, whether it's the just dealing with this, the wasted time we're spending on this as opposed to moving forward. I just, to illustrate that, we were in a Hamilton Conservation Authority meeting last night and there was a conversation happening about how we evaluate wetlands in the province and how far we've fallen. Um, and I just wanted to, in that kind of, note that yes we're talking about how do we do advocacy how do we engage with a government that doesn't care how do we try and raise these issues and it's it's i think something we're all struggling with and i i take your point which is well just do better keep up skilling do better comms do better campaigns consult the professional people in communication absolutely i also want to have a conversation though about what is the target we're actually asking for and is now the time to say if we have a system that has no accountability in it, if you can have an integrity commissioner report come out, an auditor general report come out and confirm things that everyone already knew, like it, we get special details about what specifically happened, but no one was surprised that at the outcomes. So do we not need a new system at some point? Or is the conversation not, 
you know what, is Ontario really a democracy anymore? We have all these conversations, but oh, look over the border, it's so scary, it's so scary. How is our system that different today? Well, you're not going to get an argument from me. I mean, we've seen the tentacles of the corruption that were exposed in the Greenbelt scandal, and we can now look at what happened in long-term care homes, what happened with the hospitals deteriorating. I mean, there's been two reports just even, I think, since the meeting, uh, uh, the Greenbelt meeting that we've been discussing that have come out that are as scathing as the AG report on the Greenbelt was. So that's systemic corruption, right? Um, what the hell are we doing in this province? And who's getting away with what? And how do we stop it? And that's why I want the RCMP all over the Greenbelt scandal, because I don't think just because it is this way, it should be this way. And people who are benefiting and profiting on the backs of the poor and the taxpayer and those of us or those who are struggling to meet ends and to pay through inflation. And they're watching these people get enriched through this dark, opaque, undemocratic process. I mean, I'm with you. <laughs> you know, we need to change the system. Uh, and in, in my experience with campaigns, you start that systemic change by taking down the bad actors who are the, the face of that corruption, right? That's when you start to see the, the Overton windows shift and people go, oh, okay, we can't have any more of this. Let's, let's rededicate ourselves to systems change and to democracy and to actually showing up and voting for God's sakes instead of sitting home like most people do in municipal and provincial elections. So I, I'm with you on all of that. I'm just looking at this now strategically and you're right from a comms lens. What message is the city going to be sending on September 14th when they do another one of these meetings? Uh, is it going to be the same mixed messaging that went out that caused such concern? Uh, or is it going to be a little more clear from maybe our discussion here, Alex, or from some, I mean, was the mayor at the meeting? I don't think she was. Will she be at the next one to sort of say where the city is in a, between a rock and a hard place like you just articulated? So the next meeting is a meeting of it's a special meeting of planning committee. So again, this is a, we're moving through the apparatus of making this decision publicly. Like that's, I think the change that's happening is we are doing this process that we are being forced into doing. And what we're saying is, hey, everyone, hey, city of Hamilton, this is a decision we know you care about, come watch. So I, I just also wanna acknowledge that there was a public meeting, which is more about getting engagement. And then there's an open meeting of the planning committee. There will be some opportunities for folks who register because it's a more formal process. It's a, it's a planning committee meeting. Um, for folks who wanna register in advance, they will be able to participate formally in that process. We'll be able to speak, provide remarks, things like that. Um, but it will be, my understanding of that meeting is we're receiving the notes from that past meeting that just happened, as well as receiving the information from many people who do register. Um, and so, I think this whole, what is the messaging going to be? What is this? The process is unfolding right now is for people to involve themselves in that conversation about how we want to engage. I've been clear about how I think we should engage. And I think we're hearing from some residents that agree with me, but I want to be clear. It's not universal. I will wait to see the numbers. There's been some tally counting. We'll see how people filled out the surveys. I think your points about, well, how does the question structure, the type of response, like we're all clever. I think we can, we can notice that how the framing led to that answer. Um, but that's that's what the meeting is. So I don't I don't think it's this whole try and attempt to do something in secret. I think we're acknowledging that this is a oh one of the darkest slimiest things that is happening right now, and we're trying to at least from how I see it and how those who I think are really supportive is the least we can do is say hey everyone come watch as this happens. It's not saying we like the decisions that are in front of us, but I think that's a part of it. And have your say too. Well, you're asking people to bear witness, right? To bear witness to the fact that you're following a process you don't want to follow, you, you're objecting where you can, where you have the ability to vote and object and make your statement as counselors, as a governance body. But you're really saying, you know, bear witness to the fact that we're doing what we have to do, but we are also, it sounds like, wanting to also be authentic about how we feel about it. And, and I think you have a right in a democracy to do that, right? Uh, and, and so I just, I hate to put you on the spot like this, Alex, but I have to ask you, like, where is the mayor in this or or using her bully pulpit or being at these meetings? She was absent from a lot of the Greenbelt protests, even the one at City Hall that the mayor Burlington showed up for. She wasn't there at the huge meeting the other night. Um, and and I just I'm I'm kind of unsure about who's leading if there is any kind of resistance from city council as a governance body. Like who's leading that charge or, or, or is somebody leading it or is it just sort of the collective all speaking up? Well, I think 
I just I want to be really clear, and I'm not trying to avoid your question with a with a nice little pivot that's kind of convenient in doing that. But I I want to be clear who's been leading the greenbelt conversation has always been the people of Hamilton, and to a different maybe under a different extent. But if we want to invoke things like 1492 Land Back Lane, some of the other things has been Indigenous communities. Mm -hmm. um, Indigenous land defense movements in North America and Canada uh, that from oil change international reporting stopped 25 percent of North American emissions by using land defense. And that's in recent years. And so this is the single largest climate tool we have. It's the single largest like that's who's winning the fights. That's who's engaging. Politicians come in afterwards, cut ribbons, clean up, take credit. We have a role to play. But who is bit? So like I just there is a clear leader and it's the people of Hamilton. And I don't want to take their credit and I don't want to steal their thunder. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole, like, I think the mayor's capable of answering questions about that. Busy schedules. Like I, I'm a lot of 12 hour meetings, so I'm not going to make excuses, not going to engage really there. Cause I don't, I don't know is the most honest answer about where she's been on a specific day and a specific thing. Um, what I will say is we're united as a council in terms of standing up against the green belt. We obviously are 16 people with 16 different opinions. Um, <laughs> and when we have tactical conversations. We do it publicly and openly. And so folks can, again, I just, I want to direct people back that they can see how their local representative engaged in these conversations. It's not a secret. Um, and if you disagree, you can have your voice heard. Um, well, last, time, last time I had you on the O show when you were running for council and taking out an incumbent politician, I was impressed by your community engagement. Uh, you've got a, a real history. You've got real bona fides on that. And you know what you're talking about. And I take your point. You don't you can't speak for the mayor's agenda on this or her attendance on this. But let me just ask you to clear for for the O show viewers, because we want this to be accurate. What is the current city's position on the Greenbelt lands being taken, uh, the urban boundary expansion? What is the, on the books right now in the Premier's office, what does he think the city of Hamilton is saying, at least at council, if not the messages that might be sent through the- Yeah, we have formally requested that the lands be returned to the, and you can't ask for something to be returned unless it's gone. So we are asking for the things to be returned to the Greenbelt. That is our formal stance. But when an application comes in to planning committee, we have a legal response to respond to it. Like that is the issue. And so as those applications come, how do we respond? How do we engage? Do we use the provincial facilitator process that's been talked about? Those are all the questions that that's there. So it, what's our stance on this? That's simple. The issue is the province is saying, we don't care. We're going ahead anyway. And so our stance, what we would like to have happen is not being listened to. And therefore, yes, there is a, there is a disconnect. There is a discordance. But I don't think that's us giving in or rolling over. That's just following the constitution and following the division of powers. And I think I've been quite clear, let's rip it up. Like, let's do something else. Like I'm I'm tired of this. I think no one else who's younger is thinking, oh yeah, Ontario on a great track. We're, we're doing great here. I think we're okay to have more serious conversations about what does governance look like? Do our systems work? Mm -hmm. No. So let's, let's do that conversation. Maybe in the lead up to maybe a next provincial government, I would hope to see real changes, not just about what we're going to do, but how we're going to do things differently. Um, and I just want to say, again, many of us have been pushing on this fight for such a long time before election, like whether that's been the work uh, through electoral work. So I just I want to do give credit that the Ontario NDP talked about adding the lands back into the green belt as their election stance in the most recent election. Um, MPP Shaw was there. Uh, Craig Gassar was doing work with Save Our Streams and protecting the headwaters of Ancaster Creek. So for many of us, this is continuing the work. And so that's also the pieces. Can, if you have a track record on these files or have been going up, like it may, it may be that you miss a meeting or it may be that you miss something. And so How does it make I think the conversations that we have to have should be led by the public. And if People think that we have tactical decisions to make and they're not happy with the direction. The best way to get that direction would be to speak up and have your voice heard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of us have platforms where we get to do that. And I, I'm very appreciative of you being here. I just have to ask you a final question. How are you feeling with that dissonance, with that disconnect between what you believe in and, and what you believe your colleagues believe in and what the city has put on the record they believe in about these lands and having to follow through on this process? I mean, you've given me an excellent strategic view of how to navigate that and discuss the actual system change and all the rest of it. But how are you, Alex Wilson, feeling? I so I, I'm a campaigner, like this is the kind of the background I come in. And so it's hard not to see like, yeah, this is this is awful. But I think there's an opportunity here. 
and because we turn away as a people. Um, and that's that's cultural. And it involves saying, no, we don't want to look at these problems. And so we're having a crisis in housing right now that is so large. And it's because we're having a crisis in evictions and the financialization of housing. We talk all this talk about supply. And absolutely, I'm not saying we don't need supply. But doesn't matter if that supply is not affordable. It doesn't matter if we're not building affordable homes. And it doesn't matter if all of our efforts to shore up affordability for tenants is just going to subsidize a landlord or subsidize someone who's making money off of the system. And so this is all connected. And I think what it's exposing for many people is that maybe the systems we have in Canada and Ontario aren't this bastion of democracy we thought. Maybe in the 21st century, we need to relook at what systems that are hundreds of years old, like yeah. to be clear, 150 year old country, we haven't changed some of these things in, since, in a long time. And so maybe we need to have bigger conversations. And I think that's in all of this pain, in all of these contradictions, I think what it's exposing is the clown show that Queen's Park has become and the clown show that so many of our political institutions have become. Just look at what the federal election is looking up to be. Um, and so I, I think it's people kind of taking off the mask or exposing who they are. And there's always a value in that. Um, as an organizer, when say someone who's in charge of making a decision is showing who they are, it's our job to remember who they are and to tell people who they are. And so my kind of last piece here is if folks can look at that city council meeting. I think city councilors told us what their values were when they said how they wanted to engage with the provincial facility. That's an example. We also can see Doug Ford and the provincial government's values in that integrity commissioner report that talks about how local developers engaged and lobbied to get these lands in there. So I think people are speaking for themselves um, and showing who they are. We have to respond accordingly though. Well, I want to thank you for responding to my tweet that night because I in you know, in good faith, I want to understand. I didn't want to make an assumption because I know all of you, I know your hearts and I'm like, I don't understand what's happening with this meeting. What what are we doing right from mm -hmm. a messaging perspective? It smacked is all off for me, uh, but you have explained it brilliantly as you did in the tweet thread and even more here. I appreciate you unpacking the nuance. And when you talk about the clown show that is our governments, I think of it more as Gotham like now, you know, clown show sounds like it's harmless. It actually and and before Foonery. It actually is quite dark and quite deliberate and, and enriching certain people, maybe even criminal. Um, so, but I love that you're saying let's challenge the actual way we're doing things and how we're doing things and not just kind of constantly be reacting to it as though there's nothing we can change. Well, and not being surprised that a colonial, like a settler colonial country, not saying that as an insult, just like a reality, a fact, a fact. Totally. Of course, has these challenges. Of course, these are the areas where our laws are set up to fail. Of course, these are the areas where local communities don't have it because that's the history of this place. And so I think that's also something where it's we can't be constantly surprised that the rules aren't on our side, where are the lawyers, don't we have rights, who can sue to save the day, and then start thinking about what does that mean? And how have we won before? And these, there's a tradition of protecting these lands across the province, whether it's local farmers, rural communities, Indigenous peoples, different areas have different histories of protection. It's those histories, not the legal protections of the Greenbelt, that are going to get us through these next couple of years. And it's that continued history of people engaging. So I'm just, again, of course I'm smiling when I see hundreds of Hamiltonians out ready to defend the Greenbelt. I get belt. it now. I get it now. Thank you so much, Alex. And I hope to have you back on the O Show uh, to talk about the housing thing. It's something I'm very passionate about. And I think, it, as you said, all connects. But thank you for opening up the broader discussion. Now my, my brain is going towards that systems discussion and uh, where we are really at a province. And do we need to have a systems pivot and move away from some of the ways that things have traditionally been done? Because we can see the corruption uh, day by day with story after story coming out of this government. And who knows what else is going on at other levels of government. So thank you so much for being on the O Show, Alex, and uh, we'll keep our eye on it and we will keep engaged. And as Alex said, if you're watching the O Show, engage, of course, here with the conversation by subscribing, but also go to that meeting, sign up, be heard uh, on September 14th. Watch what council's saying about this so that we have a nuanced understanding of this very complicated and very important issue for our province and for Hamilton. Thanks so much, Alex. Thanks. Care about current affairs, it's on the old show. And when you want to get clear what's going on here, it's on the old show. If you like to stay in the know, tune yourself into the O show, it's the old show. Laura Babcock's the old show. With a lot of great guests, she puts them to the test on the old show. There's no doubt they'll be calling them out on the old show. 
stand for something or fall for it all. Ontario, hear the call of the old show. It's a podcast, the old show. Laura Babcock's the old show. Stay informed with the old show, old show.